Hi guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Monday the 11th of March. Uh, if there's any ladies and mothers out there, happy Mother's Day for yesterday. Hope you had a fantastic day and got sport rotten. Didn't lift a finger. Today what I thought I'd do, because I've got one day off work this week, and uh, I thought I'd come down the river <laughs> near the end of the season, just see if we can get, whittle a few roach, chub, any, anything out the river. Uh, so it's so literally now, it's about half past 12 in the afternoon, so I got up early this morning, I had a plan in my head to get a few bits and pieces together, uh, a bit of tackle, literally got a backpack, a backpack, one rod, my landing net, unhooking mat, some bait, and uh, some tackle, and that's it. Uh, I'm, I'll probably give it two, two hours, two and a half hours, I've got a couple of pegs in mind. The peg throws to the right, uh, I was hoping to fish that, which is through the trees, to the metal railings if you know where that is. There's a guy fishing there already, he's just literally got down five minutes before me, but sod's law. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I found this look, nice looking peg, there's a bit of a slack area, there's obviously trees being cut, cut back. It's running quite fast on this bend, and it's a lot slower behind these uh, that tree that's protruding out into the river. So I'm going to give that a go. Also down there, if there's nothing there, there's some big logs sticking out of the uh, water. I can see a nice slack area behind the back of there. But basically, this is my peg for a few hours. If I don't, if nothing produces here, I shall go up, upstream towards Helsden. There's another bend round there. There's a peg just to the left of the bridge. There's a deep hole there, close in. There's some, some kind of sort of like old iron works. That used to be very good for some chub. If not, I'm gonna try the back pool at Helston. But I'll give it a couple of hours here first. I'm literally just keeping mobile today. I've got a bucket of bait here. I've got some ground bait mixed up in the bottom. I've got some maggots in here, which have riddled off. A couple of maggots in there. I found one bit of uh, polony. It's defrosting. I've got some load of worms in here. I've got some ground bait. I've got some hemp, dead maggots, bag of casters. Couple of slices of bread. Rod, I've got my. I bought this for commercial carp fishing when I had the bug, but very rarely gets used. I've got a MIDI IM2 waggler rod, lovely little rod, 11 foot, recommended 12 pound mainline. I've got that teamed up with a Mitchell Everset Gold 3. That's the 4000 bait runner size. Again, hardly use this reel, once or twice. It's got eight pound uh, Shimano Technium mainline on there. And it's got a very simple running ledger rig for feeder bead. I made up some hook links today um, with some bands and some bayonets and bits and pieces. But I've got a simple, well, I've made like an open end feeder. It's a maggot feeder, I'll just cut a few back. Uh, a window in it. Strapped on a bit of extra lead, so it's about one and a half ounce that one. Got a six pound main line. Again, that Shimano Technium main line. I've got a size 10 Camazon animal, animal hook. Probably about a two foot hook length. I'm probably going to start off with a bit of sweet corn, a couple of bits of corn, tip it with a dead red maggot. So I'll get this cast out. I want to cast it just behind that sort of cut off post in the little slack area just to the right of it all right let's get baited and get to cast out
seems to be a fair bit slow there, a bit more than I was expecting, because the guy around there was only using a tiny little bump, but he was on the inside of the bend. But it might step up. I'm just going to sort myself out. I've got stuff everywhere. I've literally just bought with me. Made some hook, hook lengths up, about two and a half foot. Again, size 10 animal hooks, um, some bands and some bayonets and bits and pieces. I've got 10 or so feeders, maggot feeders, open end feeders. I've got a little box of mixed pellets and uh, all bits and pieces. Some shot, the usual thing, uh, disgorger, scissors, tying machine. Uh, Spare hooks, and that's it. Got a second cast. It's quite flowing quite hard out there. It doesn't look like it, but it's really flowing quite hard. So I'm gonna have to step up my feeder to a heavier feeder. But I was just thinking today, I'm gonna keep a close, closer eye on the time. And as I was talking to the other guy, I think it's gonna be a case of moving to like two or three pegs, just to see if you can locate some fish. Um, you might be able to drag a few into the area if they're, if they're in the area, but I reckon, you know, two hours, two and a half hours is plenty long enough. If there's any fish around, it's probably a case of so much water and flood. I mean, it's all marshy behind there. I followed the path, but you can see where it's been, how high it's been lately with all the floods and flood water. And as I say, it's probably a case of moving three or four times and trying to locate a pod of fish wherever they're held up or wherever they choose to be. But I've just put a worm on and a dead red maggot. I'm sure if there's any chub around or decent roach, they'll snaffle it out. Good thing about this peg, got a nice bench. I didn't bring a seat or anything, I just bought a cushion. Well, what I thought I'd do, second cast, I'm going to try a worm. If there's any chub down there, it's going to rip his head off. Just going to thread that up the hook. I'm 
rolling, lad. Don't fucking kill it. I'm just gonna tip it to the tail. Okay, I'm going to have to step up to a heavier feeder because that's not holding. It's just bouncing around a bit too much. Okay, I just had a bite. I didn't see it, but it's taking my worm and my maggots all chewed to bits. So I'm just going to keep that bit of worm on. I'm going to put two or three red maggots on, live ones. It's a size 10 up. I've just stepped up the feeder. I just put on a Tamers and Black Cat feeder, and I've just rolled up and put some lead inside it as well. Just a few maggots, casters, and hemp in there. We'll get that cast out. I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try a little bit closer towards the end of that point of the uh, stump there. See if the flow is a little bit slacker. That was a lousy cast. <laughs> that was emptied straight away. That's absolutely empty straight away. So it must be tonking through. The thing is, if I go too far, I'm in the bush. Tricky cast. It's a tricky cast. Might be better underarming it again. I'm not going to put any bait in this time. Well, we haven't blanked. It's a little fat thing, whatever it is. Yeah, 
It looks like a baby carp. <laughs> I have to have a look on the little bullfinch or little baby mirror carp. You never know. Not seen one of them for years. I'm actually uh, put some more bait through the ground bait and because it's still pacey and it's emptying out nicely I'm just loosely packing the ground bait it's dead, dead maggots, live maggots, casters, hemp I'm just plugging it and it's still washing out nicely it's still getting washed out We'll give it half an hour, 45 minutes here. See if it produces anything better. There's a bite again. And again, sharp rattles on the tip. Maybe it's just things oh, nipping the maggots, look. There's four or five maggots on there. Well, hopefully we'll uh, feed off these little fish. No, I've missed it. Well, I said that about the last one. <laughs> oh no. He sent his brother. A little minnow. Tiny little minnow. Look at that, on a size 10 up, look, right on the underside of his.
We've got to be something a bit better than that, haven't we? But we're not blanked. Just. I'll try a little bit of bread flake in a minute. I'll size 10 up, I'll put a big, big bit of bread flake on. I know I'm using a maggot feeder, but you still use it for ground bait. As long as it's not too wet and you don't pack it too tight. Hey, the, the flow is pretty steady here. It's pretty. Uh, just trying to get that a little bit further across if I can. Bite straight away, look. There you go, it's rattling away. Oh. Missed that one. I'm not going to feed this tire, I don't want to overfeed it. It's only a little small, but that's better. Right over, not too close because I know there's a lot of falling debris, branches and stuff. But it's a bit further across, so I haven't got the the flow as much. And feed again one tiny little nugget right across this time in fact just look at the way that ground bait is there the further you go across there's a bit of a back backwash It'll tremble.
We're lucky there. I've just moved up stream a little bit, just to the next peg. I have to go get my land in it just in case. But automatically, so much better here. Or well, I feel it so much better. I've got snagged a couple of times down there, with under trees, under the water, and bits and pieces. I had a decent bite, but I got snagged up, and I've just lost a feeder on one of the branches. But it's pushing through really, really hard in that swim. But I've just literally moved up here, casting into a little hole there. It's a lot slacker. It's a lot more room. I can just swing underarm. It's a little bit sh narrow here. Oh, and there's a bike straight away. rattle on the tip. Just put a worm on, tip with a red maggot. There's a good bite. Smaller feeder. It's holding nicely now out there. I've just done it in a loop rig. Took about a foot and a half loop. And a loop, little loop at the end for the hook length, and it's got the feeder running in in the loop.
Gue gak ada Gue We put one ball of ground bait in, it's laced with dead maggots, casters, hemp. It's there, just move swims, just up to the next swim, but it's uh, just feels so much better here. We've got a better cast. There's a few uh, branches still in the water, but. Just going in that hole. Had a few good rattles and tap oh there's one straight away look maybe that's just a feed him no nope. I think that's a small fish oh my word is <laughs> hey, dear me a little ball Oh. Any idea what that is? I'm a bit stumped on that one. Bullfinch. That's not good, is it? <laughs> Okay guys, it's half past two. It's going a little bit quiet now. I've had four little minnows. So I'm going to give it till three o'clock. No more than that. I'm going to have another one or two casts. And then I'm going to make a move. To another peg further upstream. Probably give it a couple of hours there. And then I'm going to go to the back pole I think. It's only producing a couple of little minnows, not even any roach or dace. I don't want to keep casting in and out, in and out. And, uh, I was getting rattles at the chuck, but uh, I slowed up a bit, so... I mean, I know f fishing the river anyway, it normally comes good. At dusk, dusk into dark, the chub seem to uh, come out of all their hiding spots and all their haunts and, you know, the peg I wanted to fish in the corner where the guy is. We got down there in the afternoon and nothing all day long and as soon as it was virtually virtually dark just 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 barely light enough to see the odd tip started flying around but uh, 
So I'm going to give it half an hour here. And then we'll... Well, it's quarter to three. I'm going to have one more cast with five little minnows. There's nothing else producing here, so it's one last cast. I'm going to get packed away. Unfortunately, that one's right in his eyeballs. <laughs> Might be a bit blind in one eye. Off you go, buddy. I'm going to have one more cast. And then we'll make a move. I mean, I would stay if I was getting a few nice roach and dace and stuff. But uh, all I'm getting is tiny little uh, minnows. And I don't think anything else is going to come along just yet. Let me say, we might do. As it starts to get dark, but I don't want to waste any more time. Well, I'm just making my way down to the next peg. It's about 20, 20 past three. Just uh, decided to make my way down to the back pool. Give it a couple of hours here. And if we don't get anything here, I'll move somewhere else. So come on up. Walk down with me. Got look a bit. No, I don't think so. I think you're gonna go straight down. That's deep. Okay. So I stick to this bit. Small steps. Just. That is belting. It might be a case of going a bit further downstream then. It's belting through. That's white water. I won't be able to hold that. I need to be careful of this banking because it's been so wet. And it's well, it's clarted out. It's been flooded out. And sort of. Yeah, that's really bad. Just be careful of the bank. It's not been cut away or anything underneath. We'll have a few casts of the feeder, I think, just to see where we're going to be able to get put.
Do I watch this bank? Yeah, I just got down to the second place. I haven't, I haven't baited yet. I just had a little bit of cast about just to see where I can hold. But just off the end of the bush doesn't seem too bad. There's obviously going to be a lot of uh, debris still coming downstream. I'm just going to start on the same tactics. I'm still going to do um, start with maggot and worms and stuff and see what's about. We'll try a bit of lunch and meat later on, a bit of sweet corn. Just gonna do the same tactics, I'm just gonna fill the feeder, plenty of casters, hemp, and I'll just plug it up a bit of ground bait. Seems to be a fair bit of water pushing through, so let's get that. Let's get this crud off the line, I don't want any building up mm. just going to catapult some hemp and casters through Okay, I don't want to go too near the edge here. Well, that'll do it to now. I don't want to overgun it with feed. I'm just going to put one small nugget of ground bait in. Squeezing it quite tight. And there's a bite. Ah, I hit my coat with that one, it's lousy. Don't want to be doing that, spraying bait all over the bloody place. Okay guys, what I've done, I had a bit of a cast about, and uh, I had a fish, but it snagged me. I remember there's there must be a, there's a big obstacle, sort of like a third of the way across a tree or something. But um, I've just had a bit of a cast about because I lost my hook length. But I fancy the peg opposite this slipway there. I don't have a cast, and it's nice and slack in there. So what I've done is I've just put a lot bigger feeder on so it's holding. And I've lengthened the hook length to about two and a half foot, three foot. Still keeping with a size 10 hook and maggots. But I'm just going to have one or two casts here. Let's switch around. 
It's literally going to have one or two casts here. I might ping pong between sort of uh, pegs. And then I'm, I'm going to go between them two trees in there. It's sort of slack. I'm going to give it five minutes here. If we get no signs, I'm going to move. Oh, this is a bit Hang on. I'm going to give it one more cast and then I'm going to move there's a little bit of a green over there nothing dry it's on some sort of like falling reeds and stuff so I just we've got the flow coming through here quite fast and then towards the end of this bowl it sort of steadies up a bit okay what I've done guys is I yeah, moved pegs, but um, I thought I'd just double check first. Make sure I can hold the bottom, but it's tonking through out there. Um, still not being able to hold the bottom. I mean, the floodgates are open pretty wide and it's just bouncing around. So I thought uh, it's, it's pointless to try to fish there and spread in the, the bait all, all around the peg as it's just bouncing down and holding. So I took it off, took the hook length off, didn't put any bait in and just had a cast about just to see where I can hold the bottom. Just, you know, I'd rather find a nice little hole where I can present the bait. I know there's bait going to go down and uh, I can feed in a tight area. I'll show you around. I'm just sort of like almost underarming it, about a third of the way across. literally just third away across on the end of the uh, sort of white water a bit hang on a minute I've got a big slack liner hang on what's going on here a big slack liner there Put one nugget of ground bait in and cast out some one catapult of uh, hemp for one of the casters. in that hole
but at least I can hold the bottom there. I'm just off, off the edge of the run. Let's see if we get any bites. I've lost a clip from a microphone. Not that off, I don't know where it's gone. In the bramble somewhere. You never find that. I'm just sticking to the same tactics and we'll, you know, not change because if we get anything, I want a chub. If we get a chub, if not, we don't. But we can but try, that's what we can do, try. What I'm going to do in a minute, my meat's defrosted so I'm going to get that cut up and try a little cube of meat on the size 10 hook. Okay, while I was sitting and waiting, I thought I'd just knock up a couple of slices of bread and some Stilton and some blue cheese. And we just moulded up a <laughs> some blue cheese paste. I just moulded that around the size 10 hook and just cast it out in the same spot. So I'm going out and out, chub. I've got the other hook length ready um, with the band on it. I pull a bit of meat through it, I think. I'll just try a bit of meat and a bit of cheese paste and see if we can get anything. But uh, at the minute I'm not much holding on much hope. But Ooh. yeah, it's quiet, but I expect it to be quiet and I don't I didn't expect it to fish its head off. You know, we might get one or two one or two chub if we're lucky. We might just get you know. But it's quarter past five. I'll probably give it another hour. And see how we get on but you know again i would have at least while i was on the maggots and bits and pieces i would have thought at least we've got a, a, a bite from a roach or a dace or a small fish but uh, nothing not a touch the first cast over the right near the <coughs> slipway there the, bod, the rod did sort of rip, rip round and I wasn't sure whether it was uh, in the current or not but I wound in and all the maggots were gone completely off the hook which was a bit weird so I'm not sure if I missed a bite on the far side but it's so difficult to hold the bottom out there it's just ripping through but oh, I knew it was going to be sort of grey and miserable today but it was forecast no rain, zero chance of rain, but it is sort of like drizzly, damp, but it's very grey, very, really, really grey. But we'll, uh, we'll persevere. You never know, come the witching hour. But it's a lovely looking place, you know, I love... You would have thought it would have held a, you know, a lot of chub. And I know they came here in the summertime and had loads of chublets and dace and roach and that, but uh, you know, it might be just too much flow here. <coughs> They might have gone somewhere further downstream, a bit slacker water. But that's why I'm trying not to slack eddies here. And that will keep going. Well, I just thought I'd try the underarm cast down beside the tree here, on the inside. It's really deep. There's a hell of a lot of flow. It's all over the place here. The inside's running hard right to left. Further out is belting through left to right. Mm -hmm. I've just thought I'd try down here and just 
I'll just put a big uh, lobworm on just in case there's a perch or anything down the inside. I thought I'd clip the new ro uh, rod light on. Ooh. Yeah, that's just the flow. I was getting nothing where I was, nothing at all. I've got that light positioned a bit further back. It does go further down to the a tip, but it's just a bit prone to uh, the line going behind the back of it or catching on it. So I put it on after I cast out. I don't want to cast out with that on. There's any slack line, it's going to go around the bell or something and just stap your rod. Okay, it's 10 past six. <clears throat> I'm gonna give it another cast or two. Not even getting any knocks or signs, but uh, that's just the flow. He says. See, he's getting that. There's no sharp, it's not, it's not a sharp tug or rattle. It's just debris coming down on twigs and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to give it another 10-15 minutes and that would be it, I'm afraid. I've just cast it back out where I was, sort of like a third of the way across. Okay guys, hope you can see me all right, we're losing the light. Yeah, so it's about quarter past six. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes, knock it on the head. If I get something, I'll get back to you. If not, tight lines, I'll see you again in another video. If you like the video, press like and subscribe, all helps. And uh, sorry there's no fish, but uh, I think times are hard so at the minute, but we're getting out, we're trying. It's, you know, towards the end of the season now, a couple of, uh, one or two evenings sessions after work i'll probably leave the stuff in the car and then go for a couple of one or two hour sessions after dark right we get a fish i'll get back to you if not tight lines all the best guys <laughs>